Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete. And you already know just by looking, we have something super special. What is it? It's this car right here. This is a 1992 Ferrari 348 TB. But before we get into this mid V8 engined Ferrari, let's talk about what's going on here. That iconic Italian brand started by Enzo himself, Ferrari. It really is that epitome of what Italian sports cars are all about. And really, so many of us having posters on the walls of our room, just dreaming about different types of Ferraris. Now, what's fascinating is, is that Enzo was very particular and he wanted it his way or it was the highway. So basically, he was all about front engine cars. So if you look at all the early Ferraris, they're all front engine. His engineers and his designers finally got to him and were able to convince him that they needed to create a mid-engine car. And what's interesting is, is that basically the grandfather of the 348 is a Ferrari known as the 308. It came out in the 1970s. And if you don't know what car I'm talking about, that's the one that Tom Selleck drove in the original Magnum PI. Not that reboot series where it's more modern and stuff. They never redo them correctly. The original is the way to go. Ferrari 308 was that classic red Ferrari that Magnum PI drove. The 308 would turn into the 328. Then they ended that design and they came out with the 348. Now the 348 ran from 1989 to 1994. And like I said, this is a 92 model. After the 348, was one of my personal favorites, the Ferrari 355 Berlinetta. I absolutely love that car. After that, you had the 360 Mona, then the F430, then the 458, so on and so forth until you get to the modern Ferraris of today. Now, what's fascinating is that this was your entry level into the Ferrari family. The bigger brother to this vehicle is the Ferrari Testarossa much different vehicle, much more expensive vehicle. But what I want to find out is, if you're looking for a mid-engine Ferrari and you don't want to break the bank, is the 348, the T TB, the way to go? And is it the most underrated sports car out of them all? Let's go ahead, let's dive into our Corsa Red Ferrari and find out. Right off the bat, the dimensions, the size. This car in person is much smaller than what you see on camera or in pictures. Starting at the front end, there's Ferrari. When you think Ferrari, you think Corsa Red. The color fits it to a T. We have that classic style pop-up headlight design. Gives it that extra sleek look. We have more exterior lighting in the lower corners. And then you do have functional air ducts here for brake cooling and aerodynamics. Now, this was the style of the day, and what's fascinating is it has a lot of similarities with its bigger brother, the Ferrari Testarossa. But like I said, Ferrari Testarossa was, and to this day, a lot more popular than the 348. Now, as we come across that low slung nose, it's interesting how they put this metal grill here, because guess what? I have to zonk it. I can't believe this. On a Ferrari, it's fake. This actually does not lead to anything. And it, one thing though that I do want to point out is that this is metal. Think about today how so many brands are using plastic. Back in 1992, you have this metal grill here. I just wish it was functional. You'll notice that large flat black air dam to help stop air from going underneath the vehicle. But this area right here has a lot of similar style with the larger Testarossa. It's just a little smaller and not functional. Now, as we rise up, you got that low slung hood. There's the badge, all that history wrapped into one name, Ferrari. You got the Italian tricolore. This thing was hand assembled in Maranello. And of course we have a manual transmission, gated manual transmission, which I can't wait to take you for a ride. Now, as we come around the bend, what are we working with? Wheel and tire. First of all, you're gonna notice not a very large wheel. Back in 1992, we still didn't have 20 inch wheels. This is a 17 inch wheel, nice clean metallic silver finish with the prancing horse. 
You'll notice we have small four piston calipers up front with the Ferrari logo because braking technology was not there yet. And if you're wondering what's the size of the tires up front, 215 on the width and a 50 series sidewall. I think over time, that's one thing that we forget is, yes, we get more horsepower because of new modern technology, but tire technology and braking technology has come a very, very long way. Let me know how you like the style of the wheel. I think it's classic for this period of time, and I think it works well with the Corsa Red. Now, as we go down the side, you're gonna have that shield there, the Ferrari badge, and if you're wondering, Scuderia Ferrari. So you have that Scuderia Ferrari logo there, that prancing horse, and basically what Scuderia means is stable. So what are you gonna keep in your stable? You're gonna keep your prancing horses. You're gonna keep your Ferraris. Love the way you have these nice long mirrors here, color matched to help you look around the wider fenders from when you're sitting in the vehicle. Nice body colored, no sunroof whatsoever. We have a nice solid roof. And then one of my favorite designs as we drop down are the air slots here. This is super similar, almost spot on the money to a Ferrari Testarossa, the larger brother. You'll notice that we have functionality within the lower portion. And then I like the way they did the flush mounted door handle here. It's actually a door push. You just push that in, opens up the door and you'll notice, look, peekaboo, hello. You got pass through all the way. Close that up. One of the big badges, Pina Farina. That is that design studio that at the time was designing all of Ferrari's bodywork. We do have air intakes on both sides for that naturally aspirated V8. I'm not gonna zonk the rear antenna. That's the technology that we had at the time. It is a very long antenna, but at least they have it angled to give you some aero there. Out back, we have a little bit wider tire, 255, which is still not as wide as modern vehicles, but 255 rear tire, 45 series sidewall, and then you'll notice we still have those four piston calipers out back as well with the Ferrari logo. I wanna talk about this area here. So obviously this is where the mid engine resides. The Ferrari 308 was the first Ferrari in the 1970s to ever get a mid engine. Now I know some of the Ferrari fans out there, maybe even the Tafosi. and if you're wondering what the hell are the Tafosi, is that like a mob? like a gang or something, bunch of mobsters? No, the Tifosi are those diehard Ferrari Formula One fans that you see at all the different races throughout the season. Some would claim that the, there's a car called the Ferrari Dino or Dino Ferrari. That is not accurate. So what happened was Enzo had a son named Dino. His son passed away and to honor his son, he built a car with his son's name on it. There's no Ferrari name, there's no prancing horse, but it does have a mid-engine. It's actually a mid-engine V6, and that came out in the mid-1960s. So there was a car that was built at Maranello, but it wasn't a Ferrari. It was literally called a Dino. Now today, many people refer to it as a Dino Ferrari, but still not a true Ferrari. Working our way towards our rear, I love the way the glass. I mean, look at how curved the glass is in the back, that classic style for this time period. Some flat black, but then you have all the venting because underneath here we have that naturally aspirated V8, the Ferrari logo across the back. And then of course, like I said, this is a 348 TB. And then we have the louvered taillights. So this was another style during the 1980s and 90s that was very popular. You see it on actually a couple different vehicles of the time, not just Ferraris, but that gives you that style. We have the blacked out prancing horse. And then you'll notice behind the horse, we have full venting because of the exhaust that resides behind there. Quad tip exhaust with that same flat black along the bottom to tie it all in together. But definitely a very, very unique Ferrari but does it deserve more love? Let's go ahead, let's pop this rear engine hatch and find out. All right guys, time to get underneath the engine hatch. Now, this car is all original. So I'm gonna have to hold open 
the rear engine hatch because the hood struts no longer do the work for me. So I'm gonna have to lift this up. You'll see the hood struts in the back, but if I let go of this, it's gonna hit Steven right in the head. And I don't wanna do that, poor Steven. But what you're looking at underneath this engine hatch, first of all, you can see the beautiful intake plenum and your dual throttle bodies. Back during this time period, we have dual throttle bodies on this V8. So it's a 3.4 liter naturally aspirated V8, 296 horsepower, 238 pound feet of torque. It is mated, like I said, to a five speed gated speed transmission. And I'll show you that when we get to the interior. Zero to 60, if you know how to do the business, 5.3 seconds, top speed 171 miles an hour. And the car weighs about 3,250 pounds. Now, one thing I wanna show you is you're gonna get that beautiful red finish on the cam covers on both sides for that V8. And then you can see our suspension. You can see the assembly number, all of the bracing, everything is right here. With the transmission in the back, remember that's called a transaxle. So engine, transmission in the back together with that exhaust fleeing out, flowing out. But you know what? I wanna hear something else flow. I wanna hear some sound out of this exhaust. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's fire up this prancing horse and hear it gallop. All right, guys, we are inside this bright red 1992 Ferrari 348 TB. 1992 is when I got my freaking driver's license. I was a sophomore in high school, bought myself a Pontiac Firebird. That was my first car. I was dreaming about cars like this, that's for sure. Now, I know you're probably saying to yourself, well, Joe, I want to get into the Ferrari family. I, I can't get a new one. Those are out of my price range, but I'm, I'm liking this 348. And I'm like you, I, I dreamed about these types of cars and they're becoming more available. How much is this one? So MSRP back in 1992 was $95,000. This car is done depreciating. It is now appreciating because asking price is $92,000. But let's see what you got back in 1992 when you went 348 to the door panels. Nice, clean, Italian style. I love the way they put those diagonal lines in the door panel. No cup holders, no place to put a cannoli or anything. And if you're wondering, what's that part that's flat on top of the door handle? That's actually what you lift up to open the door. You got your power window switch, and then the rest is just carpet. Simple, nothing to it. Going from the door panel to the dash, look at how far the dash is pushed forward. That really frees up the space for the passenger. You'll notice we got ginormous AC vents. We got our 348 TB badge. Lift this up. That's normally where you would have your radio. This is a radio delete car. Kind of cool to have that. You got your fuel gauge oil temp gauge, and then you have your digital readouts for your AC. Everything is controlled by buttons. You got a place down here, a little cubby for three cannolis. And then this is where the magic happens, Italiano style. Gated five-speed manual transmission with that beautiful shift knob. And then the way it just clicks into each gear, I can't wait to take you on throttle. This is called a dog leg transmission because first gear is here. Reverse is actually up where first is on a lot of newer cars today. So dog leg, five speed gated manual transmission. You have a, of course, an ashtray with two separate trays and your little heater filament. And then this is where you're gonna be able to put some smoked mozzarella, some salami. We have our, no key fobs, actual Ferrari keys. That's what a key looks like, everybody. You stick it here like that and then you crank. You even have a little cubby 
not for any snacks, but for cassette tapes. So if you have your Van Halen, if you have, uh, you know, uh, in, in excess, you can slide those in there. Seats, the leather, nice bolstering. They really hold you in tight on the bottom, on the top. And of course we have manual seat controls. So that's where we're getting you on there. You do have little cubbies behind the seats. That's where you're gonna be able to put your Italian Twinkies. And if you're wondering what's an Italian Twinkie, that's one that's filled with marinara sauce, not cream. Another thing to point out, you could get 348s between the years of 89 and 94 that had Targa roofs where the whole roof comes off. I like this one because it's nice and solid. But why don't you come over here to the business end. I wanna show you behind the manual steering, not power steering, manual steering in this Ferrari 348. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel. This is really surreal. I'm pinching myself being able to sit back here. You'll notice those. this is where you lift up to open up the door handle. I love that clean Italian design. You got the Ferrari logo and a very wide sill. So you really have to fall into this vehicle when you get in. You'll notice the build number plate here. Love the way they have that. You could see that every time you open up the door. And then look at the pedal box right out of a freaking race car. Aluminum dead pedal, clutch, brake, and throttle. Of course, heel toe downshifting, piece of cake, but it is very tight, especially with somebody with larger feet like myself. I wear a size 12, and you can see it's a little tight. And Ferrari is always known for taking the pedal box and moving it over to the right a little bit. This thing right here, this is your e brake. You pull it up and then you bring it back down. You'll notice this brush. This is actually for the power automatic seat belts. So that's what they had back in 1992. I'm six feet tall and surprisingly, I actually have some room in here. It's actually, it's tight, but it, it's not, you don't feel like you can't do what you need to do. That's the thing I like about it. Steering wheel, no airbag, none of that crap. Nice three spoke steering wheel with the prancing horse, and then the gauge cluster. You have your speedometer, you have your tachometer, uh, oil temp, excuse me, coolant temp, and oil pressure in the center there, all housed very nicely. There is a frunk. It's, you could put a couple of gym bags in there. You don't wanna see it. It's, I don't wanna show it. It's, it's kinda lame. What I wanna do is I wanna fire up this V8 and take you for a spin. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go on throttle in this Ferrari. All right, guys, lucky day. We are inside this 92 Ferrari 348 TB. I have that five-speed gated manual transmission and that naturally aspirated V8 behind me, mid-engine setup. If you're ready, I'm ready. On throttle! Nice! <laughs> it's unbelievable the way the car makes you feel when you're driving. Each input just has so much connection to the car, especially with no manual, with no power steering. The steering is manual. So when you're at speed, it gives you all the information you could ever want. But boy, oh boy, you got to make a U-turn or drive through a parking lot, you better have some big biceps because you got to use them to turn the wheel. It's interesting just how low the nose is, how raked the windshield is, and yet visibility is fantastic in here. Fantastic. You got to be, be a little conscientious of the gated manual transmission, especially if you've never driven one before, to make sure you get it in each slot. But if you're ready, I'm ready. On throttle! Nice. <laughs> now, of course, by today's standards, you're not gonna blow anybody's doors off. It's more about the experience. Not only the experience with a Ferrari, but also the experience with a 80s slash 90s car. I mean, that's another thing to remember is you're getting such a unique experience, especially with this gated manual. I tell you, this one runs great. Pulls through the rev range. The one thing you gotta be careful of, remember, is just those brakes and the and the uh, 
The tires are not up to modern day levels of grip. <laughs> it feels so direct. It's like you're sitting on the front axle of the car when you're steering. But just a special feeling to be not only in a Ferrari, but also a Ferrari like this. These are not, they're plentiful, but it's hard to find one that's a cream puff like this one is. I mean, it's got 15,000 miles on it, which is nothing when you do the math. Another thing that I've learned that's very interesting about this Ferrari is it doesn't want to be babied. Like, if you go to just lightly shift from third to fourth or second to third, it doesn't like that. It wants to be manhandled. And if you're up to the task, it's very rewarding. Even though you're not breaking the land speed record, you're still having such an engaging drive that really stirs the emotions. But if you hear that click, that's me going into that gated next slot into the next gear. Clutch is a little on the heavy side, but once you get used to it, it's actually got a really nice pickup point. On oh, throttle, here we go. Nice. Really, really nice. Look at this. That manual steering, you just gotta be able to wheel and deal. But the seats hold you in very nicely. They have very high bolstering and it feels really, really good sitting in here. It's cool seeing the orange lit up dash. Tachometer is on the right hand side. It redlines at 7,500 RPM. Remember, with a flame, flat plane crank, a flat crankshaft, flat plane crankshaft, I'm like, I'm like stuttering because this drive is just so engaging. With a flat plane crankshaft, remember, it doesn't make a lot of torque down low, but once you get in the rev range, it really kicks. But what's nice is once you get in the sweet spot, the torque is very linear. You just got to get up in that rev spot. But just th these are the special cars I want to bring more to you. And if you want to see them, let me know down in the comment section. But we got to get back to where this all started. But before we do, we're going to drive a little bit more because I'm really loving this car. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe this. I'm telling you, 13-year-old Joe Rady would be crapping himself right now knowing what I'm doing right now steering wheel you don't have to worry about stupid buttons on the wheel none of that garbage it's all just for driving not for adjusting the radio the car doesn't even have a radio that's the radio behind me that's the music brakes are rock solid in this thing absolutely rock freaking solid it actually handles really really well considering the type of tires that are on this thing nice look at this <laughs> oh, well we gotta wrap it up I could keep driving this all day long but we gotta wrap it up and get back to Jaguar Land Rover St. Petersburg so I will see you in a Ferrari second. Hey guys, it's been one of those days that when I was a kid, if you would have told me I would be driving a Ferrari 348, I would never believe you. But these are the things that I get to share with you because of all your awesome support. But of course, we need to thank Miro and the rest of the crew at Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete for allowing us access to this pristine 1992 Ferrari 348 TB, let me know what you think. Is this the most underrated Ferrari? And do you think this is the best way, especially when you look at the price of getting into the Ferrari family? Let me know down in that comment section, but if you're new to the channel, you're on your way out, 
hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Raised Rights family. Of course, we need to give it up to the Flood Man. He's bringing the tidal wave of videography to you with this Corsa Red Ferrari. I know he's drooling. I got to get him a towel. Show him some love in the comment section. Thank you, Stephen, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.